We're good. We're just going to cut the bottoms off the stems. And just so everyone, so I guess we can start just with a little housekeeping. Once we begin, we will mute everyone just so it makes it a little bit easier on our end. But we do have um, a team member typing and answering any questions. And then we also answer questions out loud. But if you have any questions throughout the whole thing, Joe and it's under Brie Color team is responding um, to everyone and typing out any, any answers to anything you guys might have. And if he doesn't know the Perfect. answer, then we will do our, you know, we'll call on Shane and Chris and Harry, our winemaker, and Mark, another one of our founders, to answer the questions. Um, but I, I think we can start. Yeah. We got uh, meals tonight. Abby, too. I was telling Shane we have multiple hails on tonight. So. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. The whole crew. Perfect. And just so everyone knows, in the future, if you ever can't find anything in a grocery store or you need any substitutions like vegetarian or pescatarian options, um, feel free to email us in advance and we can help answer any questions. I know. Um, not all of our meals are vegetarian friendly, so we can help you come up with ways to make them vegetarian friendly. Very good. Um, but welcome to Quarantine Kitchen Part 4. Yep. Um, we are very excited to make a mushroom risotto paired with our estate, Pinot Noir. Uh, for some of you who might not know who Bricolar is, uh, we're a family-run winery here in Windsor in Sonoma County. We have a state-grown Russian River Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, but we also have a second vineyard in Fountain Grove District in Santa Rosa, where we have Sauvignon Blanc, Viognier, um, Cab. Right. Petit Syrah, Syrah. Grenache. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sauvignon. Blanc, a lot, a lot of different varietals there. Sorry, my mask is falling off. Um, so all of our wines, except for our Zinfandel and our Brut, are from our estates. And we are very excited to hopefully share our tasting room with you all soon. A little bit later, uh, while you're do stirring your risotto, we'll show you some photos of our newly um, designed and built tasting room and event center, and then also show you some of the fun wine and food experiences that we have coming up when shelter in place is no longer. Um, but yeah, so I will mute you all now and then feel free to type in any questions and then at the end you can unmute yourself and show us your meals and ask any, any additional questions. But enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So welcome everybody. Welcome. So tonight's wine we're going to do is uh, one of my favorite varietals. It's our Estate Pinot Noir 2017, uh, all Russian River Valley fruits. Uh, it's a beautiful Pinot. I would say a little more full body Pinot. Uh, lots of cherry, cherry cola, a little spice on the finish, but just absolutely amazing. It's barrel aged for 15 months. And uh, a little bit later, Carrie, our winemaker, will be talking a little more about farming and our property and how it's made. And uh, so it should be fun. Shane. Cool. I'm going to open this. Awesome. So we're doing the mushroom risotto, uh, like Sarah said, and we're going to do most of our mise en place, our prep work now. Um, and then we're going to get the risotto started and then we'll cut to carry probably once we get that going. So everybody can just kind of stir and keep cooking it because that's going to be the longest thing. That's going to take about 20 ish, 25 minutes. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, it's not in the instructions. So if you have a pot, you can get on like a medium sized pot with some water. Um, I couldn't find broccoli, Rob. I'm sure most of you probably couldn't. We got broccolini. Um, and it just, it, we're going to give it a quick blanch. Um, so if you could fill a medium sized pot, that's cold, man. You're going to pour it too. And I just got to stare at it all night. You're going to have to find a little bit. So uh, yeah, like I said, so the broccolini, we can start by prepping that. Uh, Chris is going to cook along with me. So I'll wait for him. Um, but all we really have to prep on this is cutting, like the bottoms can be kind of woody. Um, 
And so you're just going to take like the bottom inch. If you have uh, like broccoli crowns, um, you can just get, uh, just cut them into little florets. Um, this we're going to leave it, uh, we're going to cut the bottoms off and discard that, put it in the compost. Um, and then we're going to cut it in half just so it's a little bit easier. And then we'll just put that off to the side until our water comes up to boil. Um, we'll do that towards the end. So we don't need to worry about that right now. We're just trying to get everything prepped. All right. So you're lucky you can cut the garbage. <laughs> you got one over there. All right. So, uh, so yeah, that can just get reserved. We're going to cook that later um, after we finish the risotto. Um, next step, we can prep our mushrooms. So uh, we are using tonight um, some beach mushrooms, which are some of my favorite. Um, they're cultivated, they're easy to find. Um, and then these are my Takis. Um, these are all cultivated. And so they're grown in sterile conditions where you don't have to worry about washing them. If you have chanterelles or hedgehogs or black trumpets, any of the, any of the wild ones that are out there right now, um, that would require a little bit of a wash. Um, depending on the mushroom, you can either use a brush if it's like a, a bigger a bigger mushroom um, or a, a damp towel, just kind of wiping them down. Um, but your favorite mushroom that you use? Yeah, I got the my takis are definitely one of my one of my favorites. They're really meaty. Um, if you put a little smoke on them, they make really they have really good like uh, almost like a bacony texture when you cook them get kind of crispy. So to, to prep these, um, if you have button mushrooms, you can just slice them or quarter them. Um, any other mushrooms you have, just kind of cut them down so they're all uniform size. And I'll show you what, what kind of size we're looking for. So for these, we're just cutting the bottoms off. Again, we can save that for compost. So you're talking about the bottoms like, like from this section? Yeah, like the here? bottom half, like half, half inch, I mean. Okay, like that? Yep, nailed it. And so these just kind of break apart. So we're just gonna, Try and get them so they're all uniform bite-sized pieces, about like that, um, is what we're looking for. So if you have whatever kind of mushroom you have, just that's the size we're going for. Something that's like a one bite piece that you can get with your fork when we're all done. Um, so we'll go ahead and break these up and do the same with our other mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, rapini is gonna be the same. Uh, cut the bottom inch or so off, it gets kind of woody. Um, and I think we're gonna blanch it too. I, uh, I didn't put that in the original recipe, but um, it's just gonna make the whole process a little quicker. Um, so then these uh, are the beach mushrooms. And same thing, they have a little like root end kind of. Did you cut yours in half? I just, no, it, it just kind of fell apart, so you, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just cut the bottom off and we're just trying to separate them. These kind of come into little individual pieces. So they'll all be kind of the same size as those uh, my takis. All right. Yeah, and the reason I had chosen uh, the rapini, the broccoli raw, uh, over broccolini is it has a little more of a bitterness to it, um, which I think really kind of the creaminess of the risotto, it, it, it makes a nice balance. Like the broccolini is great, but it's, it's a little more sweeter, more of that traditional like broccoli flavor. Um, it'll be fine. We're going to cut our second one. Here we go. Other one cut. All right. We can set those off to the side. We don't need those quite yet. We'll start cooking those in a minute here. Um, next, we can uh, pick our time. So if you have dry, you can totally use dry. Um, just use like a pinch though. When, you, when you're using dry herbs versus fresh, you're gonna use a lot less because it's a lot more um, intense. Uh, so I'd say, you know, Right, we're doing like a what I say, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of, of fresh. I'm losing my mask. Um, uh, <laughs> for the uh, dry, I, I just do like a small pinch, like a half a teaspoon at the most. Um, but all we're doing with this, like 
is uh, just picking the, uh, where am I at? Where's the camera? The, just taking the little individual leaves off. Um, and we don't even need to chop them. It's just, so you're just taking. You get a tiny bit of stem, it's not the end of the world. Um, we just want individual leaves if you can. And this is uh, time from our garden. Very tedious. It is very tedious. <laughs> it's worth it though. Cooking with fresh herbs is so, like it just changes a dish. If you have anything in your garden, like I would recommend start with herbs. Um, Cause the, 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 the flavor punch that it ends, like just really adds a lot to a dish. What uh, other fresh herbs do we have in our garden? Oh my God, I can't wait for everybody to come see the garden. So we're just starting to get everything planted out. Um, we've got, shoot, we got uh, thyme, parsley, cilantro, uh, basil, we have um, lemon verbena, we have lavender, we got rosemary. Um, they just uh, finished constructing the greenhouse on the back of the property and that's super awesome. There's three beds inside the greenhouse so we'll be able to grow grow things into the winter, which is super exciting. I'm getting thirsty. <laughs> All right. So Everyone's going to have to email us with suggestions for drinking with masks on for next time. Somebody could make me a helmet. I will totally wear it. <laughs> I guess I have to propose the toast and drink since you're not, huh? You yeah, do, yeah, because... I think so. Everyone, please take a break and have, have a sip of wine and enjoy. Thanks, Mark. Someone suggested an IV drip. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Don't they have some of that Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a help with hangovers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we don't, we got, we got about a teaspoon here. That's about what we're looking for. And again, yeah, that's totally great. Uh, that'll go in when we start cooking. Um, next thing we can do is get our garlic prepped. So if you have two bowls, we did this on one of the other cooking shows. We have two stainless bowls. So I'm just gonna show you a little trick on how to clean your garlic a little easier. Um, Anything will work. You got Tupperware, just anything that's sort of the like size. So you can kind of, you're going to put the garlic inside and shake it. And that'll help loosen the skins from uh, the clove. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is take our head of garlic and put it the root side down on the cutting board. And then just put your palm like the, the right on top and just push down. And it'll, with a little effort, it'll break all the cloves apart. Oh my God. <laughs> he gave me a hard one. <laughs> he did it on purpose. He's got to flex harder, dude. Come on. Flex harder. There you go. Someone also said we should get camelback filled with water. Yeah, there you go. I like all of these ideas. So now we're just going to put these individual cloves, now that they're broken out of the head, into one of the bowls. <clears throat> we're going to put the other bowl on top and then. Uh, just really, really as, as hard as you can, shake it and for like 15 seconds or so. And that's gonna separate off uh, some of the skin and make it just a little bit easier to peel. I got a little frustration on this part. Is that better now? That's my workout. Yeah, it's good. good. So like you, you open it up, you can see that like half of them or so are gonna be free of the skin. Uh, we're gonna need four largish cloves. Um, if your cloves are a little bit smaller, maybe do like six, because we're gonna put some in the risotto, and then we're also gonna use some for the, uh, the broccoli rabe at the end. I think we're gonna have to find a way to drink right now. <laughs> we should. Post, uh, Post garlic. All right, so you can keep the rest. Just I would throw them at this point. You know, peel the rest uh, if you did the whole head, and then you can just throw them in a ziploc in your fridge, and you can add that to anything you're cooking tomorrow. Um, should stay in there for a while. Uh, and now we're gonna slice these. Um, really, just trying to get them as as thin as possible. Um, 
So we're putting the clove down and then just cutting across. It's like in Goodfellas with the razor blade. Um, You're gonna have to do it when we hit. I know. If you have a mandolin, that would be great if you're confident with it. Um, they have a lot of slicing tools that, different little handheld ones that are really good for this kind of knife work. If you have it, you can use it. And you don't cut off the ends, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of pushing it off to the side oh, as okay. I, when I get there. So the, the brown end, um, that's the end I'm holding. So the part that has like the little nub on it. So when I'm cutting to that, and then basically just sliding that off to the side. Just doesn't have the right texture. So then we can reserve that until we start cooking. And so uh, just a note on this, we're gonna use half of this for the risotto and we're gonna save the other half for the broccolini. So. When we start cooking the risotto, don't use all your garlic. And I'll say it again when we get there. Shane, you're so fast, you probably have to do like a dice trick or card trick the way you slide it off to the side. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with Chris. I think it's now time to take a step. Okay, we'll stand six feet apart. <laughs> we cheer like the bottom, the bottom part. That was a chip, dude. <laughs> That is funny. Oh my God. That was weird, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> the difficulty of how that was to do but that was incredible. So <laughs> do you like the taste of that? Yeah, it was really nice. It's really great with this risotto. Yes, All right, so next thing we're gonna cut our onion. So Chris, you got the onion. Yep. You only need half an onion for this. We'll just cut half so no, no, no. Oh, so uh, cut it top to bottom. So the roots to the, the stem like this way. Oh, like this? Yeah. Half. Yep. Half. Now we're gonna peel this. You can cut the bottom off of the uh, the stem end. Uh, just makes it a little bit cleaner. And then we're just gonna peel back those layers with the skin. And you can keep the root on because. This gives you something to kind of work towards, and then you can discard that at the end. Good. Yep. So then we're going to make one cut into the onion uh, horizontally, about halfway up, and go all the way back to the root, but not through it. So leave it attached. And then you're going to turn it, and you're going to cut down. It's just a, a quicker, easier way to dice an onion. So then you have everything kind of together still because we didn't cut all the way through on the back side. Oh, chilling, man. Yeah. Might not have my glasses by the end. They keep bogging up. Yeah. Okay. You did give me the sharp knife again. I don't want to cut my finger. Out. I know. Knock on wood, we have not had a knife injury since episode two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now we're just going to go cut across. Um, all those little uh, cuts we just made, and that'll just give us a nice dice. Like so. And then you just have, you're left with the root end and you can throw that out. You don't need to save that. So then we'll hang on to this. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think a sharp knife definitely helps. Um, for not crying? For not crying. I, I used to wear contacts. And honestly, um, I don't know if it's just because I am so used to cutting onions. Um, but even with my glasses, I, 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 it's rare that I cry. Sometimes you get that like super, I don't know, spicy, I guess is the word, uh, onion. And it's, it, it, it'll get me. But um, in general, um, I don't really know the trick. <laughs> Terry says, Quick cutting and sharp knives as well. I've heard running water. I think the ventilation, <laughs> the ventilation we have here, obviously, like in professional kitchens, you're always going to have a really massive hood behind you, and so that that might be part of it too. Um, all right, we got that. We got that. Butter. Um, if you want to take out your butter, we can cube that up now. 
We're just gonna take it's uh, four tablespoons, quarter quarter cup. Just gonna cut it into cubes. So when we finish the risotto with this, it melts in uh, evenly. Simon Motley says the mohawk is looking super clean. Because <laughs> that's all you see. <laughs> Simon, I'm still waiting for you to cut yours into one, man. Soraya could do it, I'm sure. Um, I think we're ready to start cooking. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to blanch our rapini. So if you have that pot of boiling water on, we're going to salt that. Um, like half a cup of salt, just, just like when we did the pasta, you want the salt, the, the water salty like the sea. Um, and then what we have is an ice bath. So just another container with some cold water. Um, so we have a little bit of ice in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the broccolini or the rob or the broccoli in the boiling water for like two minutes or so. And then we're gonna remove it and put it in the ice water. Um, and that's gonna just shock it. So it's called blanket in the green flavor it cooks it part way so when we finish it in our olive oil later on it's more of like a reheat and not necessarily cooking it all the way in the olive oil so uh, we have these are we on this camera now yeah let's switch to this one yeah i'm not put salt in if you put salt in yours i don't have salt in it. we'll do a little bit of salt yes. A little bit, I mean, not a little bit. You good? Yep. We're here? Awesome. Hi, everybody. Okay. Um, oh, the audio. That's right. Um, you want to put it over here? Oh, no, no, no. There we go. So our water is boiling. We're going to drop our uh, broccoli in there, like I said, about two minutes or so. And this is still kind of like part of our, our prep work. We're gonna we're gonna finish this at the end in a saute pan with some olive oil and garlic. This is just getting us a jump start um, so that it, it, it's easier to cook. We have we have these little uh, skimmers to remove it. If you have a colander, you can just dump the water into a colander and then add it to your ice water to cool it down. Um, realize we have a giant ice machine. You really don't need that much. For the volume we have just a, a, you know a handful of ice cubes uh just so it'll cool this down there's some chefs that don't even uh shock in the water they'll just add this to like a pan and then put it in either the freezer or the fridge um so if you don't want to do the ice bath you don't have to um it's just the way we do it here in the kitchen so i thought i'd show you how you do it it's how i do it that's right All gonna be different like ours are pretty thin so i'm thinking mine and chris's is probably done but just if you if you if you are, don't know if you're ready just try a bite it should be tender um i'd say about the same yeah about the, about two minutes i mean just just i mean the best way to do it is just pull one out and try it and if it's how you like it if it's tender uh be good. Am I sharing yours? Uh, you got one. Nope. Nope. We're sharing mine. I was gonna say you left me hanging. I started, man. I started one. Okay. So now we can shut that water off. We won't need that for anything else. We got a couple of clothes. Like this thing. <laughs> You just want to make sure it's submerged, move it around so the water pulls it down quickly. And then next thing we're going to do is uh, we have a medium sized pot that we're going to put our, our broth in for the risotto. Um, we made a mushroom stock yesterday, so that's what we were using. But if you got chicken broth, chicken stock, vegetable broth, any of that is totally fine. Um, what we want to do is put it in our pot and we're going to turn that up to like medium, medium high. We want that to get up to a uh, uh, boil. And then you want to get your broth? Yep. Uh, and we want it to, once it gets up to a boil, we'll, we'll turn it down to a very, very low simmer. 
Um, it's just that's what we're putting in the uh, risotto. So you want it hot so it doesn't stop the cooking process you have in the pan every time it's going. The mushroom stock was just, uh, we got some uh, button mushrooms, uh, a little bit of thyme, and a single shallot. We put it in a pot, um, covered it in water, and simmered that for about an hour and a half, um, and then strained it off. It's really simple. Um, same, same idea as like if you're making a chicken stock or a veal stock, but um, the vegetable ones typically go a lot faster. Um, the mushrooms were small. We cut them up a little bit, so all the surface area was exposed, and uh, it, it was it was done. They had given up all their flavor by about an hour and a half. Yeah, all eight cups are going in. All eight cups of the broth, yeah. You might have a little bit extra at the end. It just kind of depends on how much, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're using that to cook our rice. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the wrong camera. Multiple cameras now, it's, it's confusing. Um, so uh, yeah, we it, it, it's really gonna be, once we start getting towards the end, we're gonna start tasting our risotto um, in the final stages. And if, if it needs a little bit more cooking, then we'll add a little bit more broth. If it doesn't, then we won't use it all. So I'd say generally like between six to eight is what we're gonna use for this recipe today. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get our saute pan going. So this is gonna be the pan that we cook the risotto in. So make sure you can do it in a pot, um, but it just needs to be large enough to hold everything uh, once we get going. How, uh, how high? I'd say like medium high, medium, medium, medium high right now. Um, we're gonna cook these mushrooms quickly. So we want the oil to be hot. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them out. So we're gonna saute our mushrooms really fast uh, and then pull them out and reserve them. Uh, it just, they'll maintain a little bit more of their integrity. And like when we saute them, they're gonna get a little texture. And if we just keep them in the pan when we start cooking the risotto, they're going to be kind of mushy by the end. And so I think this is a way to, you know, get a quick cook. You get a little bit of that mushroom flavor in the pan, and then you start making your risotto. At the very end, we're going to add the mushrooms back in. Um, so olive oil. Uh, we're going to put a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Oh, <laughs> somebody played a joke on me. Not me. <laughs> um, yeah. Now that, yeah. All right, so the pan's hot, you can see the oil, uh, not quite smoking, but, but hot so that we are gonna get a nice, like, quick saute. So we're gonna take our mushrooms over. We'll grab our thyme also. Uh, and just all in at once. And the thyme can go in as well. We're going to season this with a little bit of kosher salt. Um, and some cracked pepper. I really just kind of stir them around a little bit. You want to keep a pretty high heat. So if your heat isn't hot enough, you can turn it up a little bit. Um, we're just trying to get these mushrooms, like a little golden brown color on them, it's gonna be nice. It's, it's gonna just give it a little more texture to that risotto, which is, you know, uh, by nature kind of mushy. This will just make it a little bit more uh, interesting texture-wise. Yeah, so not quite there. They're gonna cook down a little bit, but. Um, just keep them on the fire. You just don't don't need to mess with the pan too much. I just kind of like I'm mixing it with the spatula, but the more you move the pan around, like you're not getting it hotter. Just leave it where it's at, and it's gonna stay plenty hot. Are you hot, by the way? I mean, Matt, very hot. <laughs> I feel like I'm dripping under here. I got you. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry. I'm here for you. Is that a dirty towel? That was a clean towel. Are you sure? It yeah. felt dirty. Something about that felt really dirty. Slow down. Yeah, uh, squeeze a lemon would be good. A little, a little 
wine would be good. Um, we're going to put some white wine in the risotto in a, in a little bit. Um, but you could absolutely, I, I think lemon would be a really nice accompaniment to this uh, right now. What kind of wine would you put on? Uh, I like something crisp, so Sauvignon. Yeah, something like that. Yep. Like our Sauvignon Blanc? Yeah, like the one from Bricolor Vineyards. Yeah. Got it. So uh, our mushroom broth is starting to boil. Um, so I'm just going to turn that down super, super low. We don't want it to reduce down. Um, we just want it hot. You can almost turn it off because you don't, you don't want it cooking really. You just want it hot so that once we start pulling from there and the rice is going to, it's going to not cool us down along the way. So our mushrooms are good. Um, starting to get a little bit of color. They're definitely cooked. So we're just going to pull these off to the side. Um, I got a little tray that we're going to put them on. When you're cooking with wine, could you like cheap wine, nice wine? Like what is the... Good wine. Yeah, you want to cook with good wine. Uh, you want good flavors in there. Use cheap wine, it's going to taste like cheap wine. If you use yeah, it tastes like good, food. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think you, you know, cook with what you drink. If you're exactly. drinking, if you're drinking uh, something nice, I would cook with something nice. Um, so now I've turned the heat off in this pan. We're going to add a little bit more olive oil in the pan. I think we should drink. I know it's yeah. hard, but we should drink. All right, one more. Okay. Not one more. Yeah, cheers, everyone. Yeah. I can't remember six. Camera six. Cheers, guys. <laughs> we need a boom in here next time, too. Oh, my God. So I think you need to get camel back for the next time. I have I, no idea. There we go. So that's what we're missing. The electric stove takes longer to heat up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so one thing I forgot to do is we got chives later on. We did not shop. You want to cut that to this camera? You guys are going to be doing this kind of stuff too. Like, I'll show you how to do it, but when Terry's talking, and we've got the risotto cooking here in a minute, it's going to be a like 20 minute process for that risotto to finish. So, uh, there will be a little bit of downtime and we'll be stirring it, but this is going to, uh, what do we do? I cut the chives in half. Cut the chives in half. Take off the cordon, cut them in half. And stack on top of themselves, just makes it a little bit working for us. All right. Um, so now uh, we're just going to cut across in, into little pieces and just as, as fine as you can get it. So um, I think we need a couple of tablespoons of this. Uh, and again, these, these are going at the very end. And you're cutting too, like you can see, I kind of got my fingers back, so there's no chance of nicking a finger. Um, somehow I found a way a couple weeks ago, but uh, that's how we hold the stuff in the kitchen, just so we don't avoid uh, injuries. I love chives. Chives are good in, I mean, almost anything. Like my, was, uh, there's a restaurant in the city and it's one of my favorite restaurants, and I think they literally put chives on every dish. It just adds a nice, fresh, subtle kind of onion flavor. It looks pretty, um, but I've, it's quickly climbing up the uh, favorite herb chart for me. Can we add the garlic to the onion? Half the garlic, right? Yes, yeah, it'll be half of it when we get there. Beautiful, all right. Should we cut back to camera six now? Yeah. <laughs> it's like Blair Witch with the camera moving like that. So now we're going to go back to the, uh, the pan with um, our onions and garlic. The mushrooms are just going to sit off to the side until the very end. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold it. We can bring our rice over with us too. Okay. All right, we good? All right, 
So we got a little bit of olive oil in the same pan we cooked the mushrooms. We're gonna turn that up to low, low, medium heat. Um, and we're gonna put the onions and half of our garlic in. Um, we're saving half of that garlic for the uh, broccolini a little bit later. And you wanna cook the onions uh, till they're really all the way translucent um, and super tender. Uh, so to help them get there, we're going to add a little bit of salt. And what that does is uh, draw the moisture out from the onion, and, and it makes them uh, cook down a little bit faster. How much salt? I did like a, like a light pinch. Yeah, like half a teaspoon, quarter a teaspoon most. Uh, and so the reason we want to cook these all the way, if you don't get them cooked uh, now, they're not really going to lose their crunch even though we're going to be cooking the risotto so long. Uh, Am I supposed to add olive oil too? Yeah. Okay. All right, a little bit. We put it in there. I just had to add a little bit more. Um, and so it, it, a poorly made risotto, your onions won't be cooked all the way. And so it'll kind of have the same texture as an undercooked grain of rice. And so it'll make the, the risotto, the end product will taste like it's unfinished. Um, so this is really a pretty kind of critical step here. And you don't want to get too hot because then you're just going to start browning them. You don't want any color. You just want a low sweat. If you see a little moisture coming out, that's a good sign. That's what that salt was there for. It'll help these onions cook down a little bit faster. So we're going to get the rice in in just a minute once the onions are done. Uh, we'll need to have a little bit of white wine. We're going to put about a third of a cup of white wine in there. Um, and then we'll do the first, uh, the, the process of making risotto is once the rice and stuff's in here, we're going to be ladling in broth uh, gradually. So we'll do like eight ounces, about a cup at a time, a cup and a half at a time. Um, and so we'll do the first couple additions and then we're going to cut to the, uh, to carry Chris and I are going to go rob a stagecoach and then we'll come back and finish it. Can't wait. Also, the mushrooms are out of the pan, correct? Yeah, mushrooms are off to the side. Uh, we got texture on them and we, we want to kind of maintain their integrity. So we'll add those back in at the end and they'll still have a little crunch to them. <laughs> okay, cool. Does the wine go in the onion? Uh, after we add the rice, it will, yeah. How we doing, guys? I can't see any of you right now because I'm facing this way. <laughs> good. No mallet. It's good. Anyone else? Does anyone have any questions? Slow down. We need to slow down. So Rachel says my onions are getting a little brown. So turn turn the pan down, Rachel. So you can see there's a little bit of brown bits. That's some of the mushrooms that uh, I didn't get out of the pan. Um, but the onions, they're almost there. They're, they're, they're not less white now, starting to become kind of like transparent. Um, another minute or two, I'd say we're good. Just really want to take off that raw onion crunch. Harry says, so wilted but not brown is the key, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, if you get them brown, it's not the end of the world. Um, but ideally, ideally, we're just doing it slow so they get uh, uh, no color on them. Mine got brown as a mushroom. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, you looked at me. You can't see my face, though. So well, I see your eyes. All right. Your eyes. Your eyes says it all. Okay. <laughs> all I can see is your eyes and your mohawk. That's it. I know. And one is way more distracting. Simon wants to know, do we add salt to the onion? Yeah, absolutely. He's a little lost right now. Okay, so cool. So yeah, 
onion and garlic, uh, just half of your garlic, Simon. Um, a little more olive oil after you take those mushrooms out of the pan. Uh, and it's just really low, low, medium heat. We're cooking these onions to get them to be translucent, not brown. So how much salt? Uh, a, a, a small pinch, I'd say like half a teaspoon. We're just kind of stirring these around, loosening up any little bits of the mushroom that were in this pan. So that's just going to go into the flavor of the risotto and make it that much better. Does anybody else need a, a repeat of anything? Uh, do you put all? Oh, do you put olive oil on the mushrooms on the side? Yeah. No, the mushrooms are just, they're, they're cooked and chilling on the side. We're going to add those in uh, at the very end. And then Simon says, anything else to the onion, garlic, salt, and olive oil? Nope. That's all we got. Jesse Armstrong says, doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Is anything happening on the broth right now? No, so it came up to a simmer and then we just turned it off. Uh, you just want to make sure it's hot because we're going to be adding that once we get the rice in here. And if the broth isn't hot, it's just going to take that much longer because every time you put it in the pan, you're going to have to heat up your broth again. So we might turn it back up if it starts to cool off a little bit. But right now, we don't we don't want it cooking down. We just want to make sure it's hot. Um, some people said that Things are looking good. Simon, are you good on your end or do you need a little bit more time? Um, eight cups of stock, right? Not four. Yeah, exactly. 64 ounces. Yes. Are you good to move on to the next step, you think, guys? Are we good? We're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the onions now are definitely kind of have like a stewed look to them. Um, the crunch is out of them. That's really what we're trying to do. Uh, and now we're going to go into this pan with our rice. Uh, we're using Arborio. It's a cup and a half of Arborio. Carnaroli is another great one. Um, uh, it's just harder to find in the grocery store. Um, but the, the reason we're using these rice is because they have a high starch content. Um, and as you cook and as you stir, uh, it's going to uh, give you that that, um, that creaminess. And so you added that to the onions. Right? Added it to the onions. And then we're stirring around. Got the flame on low. We just want to kind of toast the rice um, right now. Kind of opens it up, gets those starches coming out. Uh, and then the first addition of liquid we're going to put in here is our wine. So you don't need any color on your rice. Like that's definitely, we're good. So we're going to put uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, I got the unoak chard. I think you got the sopalong. Yeah, either one's going to be great. Um, about a third of a cup. Did you add butter to no. the rice? Butter will be at the end. We got that in there. We're going to stir that. That, that'll cook down pretty quick. You want to cook it so uh, until it's dry. And that's kind of how every time we add some liquid, we're going to cook this rice down until it's nearly dry. And then it's time for the next addition of liquid. And that's kind of, kind of the process on risotto. Um, and we're just going to keep doing that until the rice is cooked. And we, we're going to be stirring pretty frequently. Like, this isn't really something you kind of set and forget. Like you want to make sure like the stirring is really what gives it that signature creamy uh, consistency at the end. Can you just confirm what's in? Onions, garlic, rice, a little bit of olive oil, and then we added the wine. And then what heat? Uh, I'm on like medium low. I'd say at home, beyond medium. This this one is very, very hot uh, compared to what I have in my kitchen at home. Um, but you want to just keep it so that it's like a low simmer. Um, the wine is going to cook down pretty quick because we didn't put that much in there. Um, but you do want the, the wine, in, this step in particular, you want the wine to get all the way reduced. Just kind of locks in a little bit of acid that'll be there at the end of the dish. Um, Harry wants to know, was the rice pre-rinsed? Yeah, we did wash our rice. 
not like aggressively, like just a quick rinse. Um, like when we do sushi rice and stuff like that, you'll rinse it a couple times. And it's okay if people did not. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people it's are saying yeah. yeah, no, it's fine. It's not a necessary step, but it is something that we did do. But it doesn't change it at all. Um, so now we're going to go with our first edition of the broth. You can see our, our, our wine is kind of out of it um, and very dry. It's all kind of starting to stick together. We're scraping too. Make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. You want to keep moving it and keep stirring. Um, now we're going to add about a cup and a half of broth, keeping uh, keeping that low medium flame underneath the, the rice. So about three three and a half ladles. Um, medium. We're going to end up doing probably about three three or four additions of the broth. Um, we're just stirring as we go, and then this is uh, this will cook down just like our our, our uh, wine did, um, and then we'll add that'll, that'll be how we know it's time for the next uh, addition of broth. Um, and do you add the same? Yeah, each, each one will be so we'll do probably like two to three additions of a cup and a half, and then by that time it'll be about. 20 minutes or so, and it'll be time to it'll be getting closer to finish. And so uh, at that point, we'll taste it, see if the rice is cooked, and then we'll adjust how much we put at the end, and I'll show you how to do that. But but for now, I think we're going to cut to carry. Um, just keep keep doing this, uh, keep cooking it and stirring, and then as it dries out, just add a little bit more broth to it. Um, and then when Carrie's done talking, we'll, we'll talk about how to finish this. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to chat us while, while Carrie's talking and we'll try to answer as much questions as possible. And for Rob and Diane, we'll, we'll add the mushroom stock recipe to the blog post. Oh, good call. So then everyone can have access to that. So Sarah, am I on? Hello. You're on. Hey, hello everyone. Can everybody hear me? Thumbs up. Sarah, you got me on? Sorry, I muted myself. Everyone can hear you. Everybody can? Yes. Okay, great. Cheers. 2017, there he is. Hey, I can see myself. 2017 Bricolor Russian River Pinot Noir. So where the guys are cooking in the kitchen, where everybody is, these vines are within just a few feet uh, of, the, of the kitchen. So just outside uh, the barn is where the vineyard is. Pinot Noir is an absolutely fun variety to make. I've made it for decades. And you know, it is one of those that in the years that I've made wine, it is, it's not that it's simple to make, we just don't put a lot of effort into uh, a lot of tricks to make it. It comes, the grapes from the vineyard are what makes it. We're very gentle with the grapes in the winery. We buy great barrels to put it in and we gently bottle it. And I know that sounds very simplistic, but that's Pinot Noir. And Pinot Noir, you know, is a variety that uh, I love to make. I've done it for years and um, it is so good with food. And, and when the wines are relatively young, they're, they're wonderful. So this wine is just, you know, a couple of vintages old, uh, 2017, a great vintage. Um, in before all the fires in the area. So we had a great uh, summer. Uh, into the winery, the grapes get to stand, go into a fermenter. Uh, we add a little bit of French oak chips to it that have been toasted. So when we ferment it, um, then we add particular yeasts that are great at fermenting Pinot Noir. Uh, in the winery, uh, we punch down the tanks, which means 
people get on top of the tanks with a big flat tool and push the skins back down into uh, the uh, fermenting wine. Uh, that goes on for a period of about two weeks and then it goes dry, which means all the sugar, we start with a lot of sugar, like 25% sugar. And at the end of fermentation, we basically have no sugar. And so in the process of fermentation, we go from high sugar to low sugar, to no alcohol, to, uh, to the, about a little bit over 14% alcohol that's in this wine. Uh, we press it, uh, which is basically take all the skins and the wine, put it in a press, very gentle press, get the juice away from the, uh, the skins. And we go into great um, uh, French oak cooperage, about 40 to 45% new French oak, a couple very specific uh, coopers that I like to use that are from Burgundy. And the rest is same coopers, but older barrels, uh, one or two vintages older barrels, and it ages for uh, a little bit over a year. So we, we uh, uh, pick the grapes in September one year, and we bottle the wine like in November or December the following year. So that's a little bit over uh, a year in barrel. So where, where these grapes are from, the Russian River Valley, uh, just at the area just uh, between Santa Rosa and, and Windsor, um, actually where everybody is here is in, in just outside of Windsor on Star Road. And it is an alluvial plain of the Russian River, which is very close to where the, um, uh, the winery is or the, the vineyard is. And uh, great cool climate. So I'm sure this one, I'm in Napa Valley, but I'm sure there this morning, like here, we had a lot of coastal fog that came in on top of us overnight, probably starting at two or three o'clock in the morning. And it stays there until uh, nine or 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning and sun comes out and gets warm. It's a great growing uh, climate. So right now the vines there, I haven't seen them because I'm, I'm at home, but the vines are probably out, that would be like uh, two or three inches. And so right now you've got the little shoots coming out and you can see little clusters coming out that actually look like Tom Hanks when he was in the movie Big and he was eating the little um, uh, pickles. And you know, and there, they look like little, uh, little clusters of, 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 of corn and they're right now. So that is actually the flower cluster. And here in the next uh, 90 days, uh, they will basically flower and vines self uh, pollinate themselves. And pretty soon we've got the sh shoots growing real long and uh, we have grapes and we will be picking the Pinot Noir in uh late september early october we were running actually kind of uh early this year in because february was quite dry but now we've had a very cool start of, of spring and so we're maybe uh, a week later than normal doesn't really mean anything it is what it is we've had not a lot of rain this um uh, this year but um, you know we've had a couple late rains. We're supposed to get a little bit of rain soon. So it's a great uh, area for growing Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. They're, those are basically cool climate varieties. And we're on track, hopefully, for a, a, another great vintage. Pinot Noir is fun to make. And I got to tell you, the Hansons and Bricoler are fun to work with because everybody's so much into wine and food. So this is actually really great food wine. And I love making risotto. I've done it all my life. I'm, I'm not gonna do one tonight, but probably in the next couple nights. Uh, risotto is just fun to, uh, to make. That's my alarm to say, hey, shut up, Kerry. So- um, Gary, me... thanks for making great wine. <laughs> <laughs> All of you, thank you. I'm in my wine cellar. You know, I got a few cases of wine in here, and a lot of it's Brie Couleur, which is right there. And so, thank you all very much. Um, can't wait to taste the the risotto. Bye, thank kid. you, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. So, I got one question for you, Carrie.
Yeah. Yes. What makes Pino so temperamental and finicky to grow? Um, well, part of it is, is, is the climate. So, and, you know, a lot of the Pinot Noir that people like to grow in Sonoma County or is over on the coast, um, uh, which is a, a lot closer to the ocean than, than where uh, Russian River is. And that's very cool. And it makes it very difficult for the vines to flower. So right now, the, the, uh, right now the vines are not trying to flower in, in like 30 days it will try to be flowering. And if it's cool, I mean, you're in a coastal climate, they won't flower well. Vines like to flower in relatively warm climate. Once they flower and the berries is set, so let's call it the middle of May, then you just want a nice uh, moderate temperature uh, growing season. So it really is flowering is one of the biggest challenges with Pinot Noir. Once the, the clusters are set, flowering is set and we, and we move ahead with, with getting the, the clusters mature, it's not too much of a challenge. We just don't want blasts of heat. Uh, we want a, a nice warm summer. So it, yeah, it's a little bit of a finicky. And the other challenge with Pinot Noir, there's a lot of different clones. And clones are slight variations of the same variety. And so there's Pomard and 115 and Swan. And, and you know, there's all these different clones. And they all make slightly different styles of Pinot Noir. Actually, some of the newer clones are actually too big. It's the old style clones that that like Pomard, 115, Calera, and Swan, they make stunning wine uh, because they make uh, Pinot Noir on the lighter style, not on the really dense style. To answer your question. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, that was great. Um, Does anybody else have a question? If, actually, Mark, uh, someone had a question, where did the name Repolar come from? I'm going to just talk. Oh, I'm going to just say something real quick. So we had uh, turned ours off uh, for a second so that everybody can kind of catch up. So hopefully we're all kind of at the same spot. Um, I've turned my heat back up to low, low, medium. I just did my second edition of liquid. And I'm just slowly stirring. So when you say second edition, you're putting yeah, so it was, more? Yeah, it was about uh, another cup and a half. Cup and a half. So every time we're putting in there about 8 to 12 ounces. Um, and just slowly stirring. You don't have to do it non-stop but definitely like every every couple of minutes give it a good stir you don't want it to stick to the bottom Go ahead, Mark. thank you so Brickler is uh an interesting name for california wine uh, we like a lot of um companies had trouble finding a, a name and we thought we had a name and then we had a trademark issue and Sarah and her husband, uh, James, uh, were looking through kind of a fun, um, hard to translate words into English, and they just started laughing. And as part of it, they said, uh, we found your name. And I said, what is it? And they said, Bricoler. And I said, you know, people are gonna have trouble pronouncing that, and do we want a French name for a California winery? And they said, we don't care, listen to the definition. It's someone who starts building something without a clear plan, cobbling together a whole piece by piece while flying by the seat of their pants. <laughs> and the honest answer is I got a little mad at the beginning. And uh, I said to Sarah and James, what do you mean we don't have a plan? We have a plan? Of course we have a plan. And they said, well, the plan, Dad, is changing all the time. I said, well, that's life. You know, um, and think about where we are today. You know, everything we're doing, quarantine kitchen and... Um, uh, our online tastings were not part of the original plan, but uh, what's fun is the plan is evolving. Our team has input to the plan, and uh, Shane and Chris have a, and Sarah have a, a, a giant voice in where we're going, and um, it really is a fun definition. The more people I talk to, and a lot of people on the, on the screen here tonight, uh, all of the country in New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, when they hear the definition, they say, it's the story of my life. You know, you have a plan in life, and um, I hate to put it this way, shit happens, and, uh, you know, you have to evolve the plan and take it from there. So it's a, it's a name that really fits our definition. Um, and uh, 
story and uh, the flying by the seat of our pants, which is the, the end of the definition has become a secondary brand and we have a rosé of Grenache. We have uh, Carrie's show in the hat. Um, uh, we have a North Coast Brut. Um, over the next year, we'll be coming out with a red blend that's flying by the seat of their pants. And uh, it really is a, a fun label, uh, as a secondary label. And, um, you know, in these times, it's really what we're all doing day by day during this quarantine. You know, we're all flying by the seat of our pants and it's kind of fun. So uh, enjoy everyone and let's have a toast. And uh, chefs, you're doing a great job. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. And we're doing a toast. Cheers, everybody. This is the last time I'm doing this. <laughs> I hope it looks as silly as it feels. All right, so I just added uh, the third edition. Um, depending on where you're at, your the, the kernels of rice should start plumping up a little bit. It's another one and a half cups. Another, another one and a half cups of uh, our broth. Um, I think I'm going to turn the heat up just a touch. It's starting to look like it's it's getting there. We're probably about a little over halfway. Um, the stirring really helps release the starch inside the rice, and that's what's going to make it so creamy once we get to the finishing stage. Sarah, do you want to start showing some pictures and maybe? Yeah, I can um, show you guys some photos that we have um, just with updates throughout Recolor. I just need to share my screen so it might look a little funny, right? Oh, here we go. Uh, roughly. So between six to eight cups is what you need. It's, it really depends on how dry the rice is and how fast we're cooking. So. When we get close, we'll start tasting it and going over it. You got music with you? I don't know. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> Put the music on. We start dancing. Yeah. No, I don't know about that. No? Um, I'll just open this slide. So this is our, our entrance to Bricolor for anyone who hasn't been here. When you're driving down Star Road, you'll see the main entrance. Um, and then when you come into our property, we have many different locations. We have locations with, we have ponds, we have vineyards, we have a winery barn that was newly renovated. This is a shot of our conference room and our VIP tasting room. So if you ever wanted to do a private tasting for a larger group or a more intimate dinner or even a corporate retreat, this is a perfect space for that. Um, this is a shot of our new tasting bar. Uh, we highly encourage people to come up, uh, order a flight. Uh, with, we have four different flight options. Um, they can also order a glass of wine and take the wine on any other location throughout the property. This is a center picture of our newly completed winery barn as well, uh, which no one's seen since we are supposed to do our grand opening the first weekend of May. Uh, this is an example, well, it's out of order. I don't know why. Um, where's my kitchen shot? That's not loading. <laughs> We're just flying by the seat of our pants here. <laughs> Drink some wine. <light. laughs> Drink some wine. Um, this is a shot of one of our atelier experiences that we've mentioned throughout uh, Quarantine Kitchen, but atelier is going to be our highest food and wine pairing. It's going to be seven courses with seven wines, and it's in the heart of the kitchen. So just like you guys are in the heart of our kitchen right now in Quarantine Kitchen, you'll be sitting at the island watching Chef Shane and uh, sous chef Evan prepare the meals right in front of you. Chris and his team will be in the kitchen as well, speaking about how the wines pair perfectly with the dishes and everything is local and comes from our property. Um, 
And this is an example of the salmon that we had paired yep. with the Pinot. Um, with the Pinot, with yeah. The Pinot Noir. That's not loading. Um, these aren't, aren't in order. This is a scallop <laughs> that was paired that was with, the with the Chardonnay. The oak chardonnay. This is the hamachi. Yeah, hamachi crudo. We did with some citrus. Salt that went to South Blanc. And then this was the pasta dish. Yeah, we did a goat cheese scarpanoche, and that's gonna go with the viognier. I think. I think out of all the wines we have here, the viognier is maybe my favorite to pair with. It's got so much versatility. Um, but our our menu will change weekly, and or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daily, it, it will change depending on what we have here grown off the property, what we can source locally, but we're going to try to switch it up as much as possible. Um, and like we talked about last week, we also have a lot of wine and food packages available for purchase for local delivery. And then we also have a wine and food package that is available for non-local um, we only, unfortunately, only have one available for non-local because we can't ship anything that has meat or dairy in it. Um, but here is an example of a beef bourguignon for anyone who is local and wants to pick up. We just got our wood oven pizza uh, this week, which is super exciting. So we'll be offering pizzas towards the end of next week. And they're gonna be made here uh we're gonna we're gonna flash freeze them and then uh we package them up and we'll send them out with we're gonna do a package uh at the end of next week uh bottle of rosé and a couple pizzas easy reheat instructions and they come out tasting just like you get them at a, at a naples style restaurant great yeah yeah that'd be awesome yeah that would definitely be good Yep. Yeah, we, we, that's what we've been doing. We, and you repeat that question. Yeah, somebody asked <laughs> if, uh, if if the rice isn't cooked, do we keep adding broth? And that's what we've been doing. We've been slowly cooking it. Um, we should be getting to a point where we're pretty close. I just tasted my rice, and it's about 80% there. Um, so you can see it's pretty thick. Uh, so I'm going to add maybe a cup of broth instead of uh, a cup and a half. You really, you want it to be just cooked through. So it should have a tiny bit of bite. Um, sometimes you order a risotto in a restaurant and it comes out and it's super mushy. Um, there is supposed to be a little bit of texture left in that rice. Not not a lot, but a little bit. Um, you don't want it falling apart. And will all the broth go in? Uh, it depends. So uh, we talked about it earlier. Um, We're almost it's, it's getting really close. I got probably a cup left in my thing. Um, I'll probably add a little bit more in a second. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to get the rice to a spot where, where we're happy with, and then we're going to add some butter. We're going to add some cheese, um, and then we're going to add our mushrooms back in. And, and, and traditionally risotto is not supposed to be like, sometimes when you get it, uh, it'll be all piled up and really thick and, and kind of, kind of stiff. Um, it should kind of fall. Like if you jiggle it on a plate, it should go somewhat flat. So we're, we don't, uh, soupy is not the word, but it, sh it should be pretty thin. It's, 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 so we'll add a touch of, of broth at the end when we're finishing it, if we need to, um, to get the right consistency. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. This workout just started. Well, we do gluten-free pizzas. Um, down the road, that's something I got to do some R&D on. Uh, I've, ne I've never messed around with gluten-free pizzas. Um, it's really kind of hard just from a cross-contamination standpoint because we will be cooking other pizzas in that oven. So depending on, on the severity of the allergy, it might not work either way. Um, we will, however, once we get open, have some really good uh, gluten-free pasta options. Um, that's something that I've worked with in the past and came up, I've, I've developed a really nice recipe for that. And Peter, um... I mean, we'll, we're still trying to come up with other food and wine packages that we can ship, 
but we have the black pepper pasta with the yeah. arrabbiata sauce, um, and that pairs with the Pinot. Pinot Noir. And it's delicious. I made it this week for dinner. <laughs> All right, so I think mine's getting pretty close. How are you doing? You want tasters? You got a spoon over there? I think your rice has a little bit farther to go. Why don't you give it a try? They said, is there a benefit to letting the rice get really dry before adding the broth? No, it doesn't need to get really dry. We do that at the beginning with the, uh, with the wine. But um, at this point, it just needs to get, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass because if it gets too dry, you'll have the, 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 it might start sticking to the bottom and we don't want that. So it just needs to get to a point where you think, okay, it's time to add some more liquid. You know, we, we make uh, arancini, which is taking the risotto and cooking it all the way. And you form it into little balls with cheese stuffed in the center. You bread it, you deep fry it. So when we're cooking risotto for that, we're not so worried about the integrity of the, uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the integrity of the rice as much because it's going to end up getting fried and so it's a whole different thing. So with that, we won't have so many different additions of liquid. Like when we make our arancini rice, we just do all the, all the liquid in at once. It doesn't get quite as creamy, but we're adding a ton of cheese in there and it's, it's a different desired result. Um, so, I mean, if you wanted to, you could do that way, but you're not going to end up with that creamy consistency that we're looking for. So my rice about ready. How's yours? How's yours? Uh, okay. A little bit longer. A little bit longer for me, but I turn mine off for the people sticking around. What's that? Yeah, it's it's just this one. Yeah. <clears throat> Ryan says I love um, how you use the word integrity and pride in the same sentence. <laughs> and then those are my flash words for the week. I don't week. know. You miss sexy though. Sexy is <laughs> yeah. your word for food. Jeff Young said, oh my God, this is the most fun we've had in five weeks. Uh -huh. That's what we love to hear, Jeff. Cheers to you, Jeff. <laughs> Cheers, Jeff. Um, so yeah, mine's, mine's there. Chris is going to keep going with this. I'll, I'll hang out. Um, Caroline wants to know, does the rest of the time go into the risotto or is it for the broccoli? That goes in the risotto. Yeah, we, we did it with our mushrooms, but if you didn't put it in with the mushrooms, you can go ahead and throw it in now. It's totally fine. I feel like I'm with people. <laughs> Dina? Yeah. It's morning time, huh? Yeah, well, good morning, Dina. Breakfast wine. Oh, no, Dina. Oh, oh Dina. Dina. I thought she was good. Hi, Dina. Hello, Dina. So, Dina, she is cooking with us. Is she really? Yeah, it's, she's it's the morning risotto time. With Breakfast risotto, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Question is, she drinking? Yeah. <laughs> we have people asking about the Pinot Noir. Yeah. 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 Pennsylvania, Chicago, Australia, Australia, even, which is very exciting. Las Vegas. Um, Gary wants to know: Did Chef Shane recommend the Viognier earlier? Yes, he did. Yeah, the Viognier is definitely one of my favorite wines we made, Gary. We uh, we actually had some. We made some Thai food at home the other night, and. It was a little bit spicy. We, we cracked a bottle of BNA and it was so good together. It's just one of the versatile wines out there. All right, I'm going to show you how to finish this now. Um, if you're not quite there, just, just watch the steps. It's super simple. So we're going to add our uh, butter that we cut earlier. Are you there? I feel like I'm there almost. I think I'm there. I don't need that. All right, cool. I don't need that. You don't need that? Don't mess me up. All right. So you can see the, the, the rice is definitely creamy. This is definitely a little thicker than I want it. So I'm going to, you know, add a little more stock after we get everything else in there. Um, but that's how it should look when we're at, at this point. The rice is cooked. It's nice and creamy. We're going to go in with the, the four tablespoons of butter. Just over low heat, just stir that in. And just confirming, we have not added the mushrooms or the chives nope. yet. Nope. No, not yet. And then how much butter? Four tablespoons. Quarter quarter cup. Do you have does ghee substitute well for butter? Uh, yeah, it, ghee would work. Any other suggestions? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is uh, extra garlic okay? Extra garlic right now? 
Oh, the extra garlic is for the broccoli. Yeah, All that's right. gonna be for the broccoli. Um, and then we're gonna put uh, about a half a cup of Parmesan in here. And it's really- they're gluten-free Parmesan. Parmesan's not gluten. It's dairy-free. I mean, dairy, sorry, dairy-free guys, oh. my bad. Yeah, dairy free, no, no butter, okay. no butter too. If you're dairy free. Try the, what is it, my yeast? Or, uh, Amber Kimball, help me out. Type in. Nutritional? <laughs> Nutritional yeast, yeah. I don't, uh, almost all of it. All of it. So, cheese is incorporated, butter is incorporated. We can go back in with our mushrooms. Any juices they release, get it all in there. It's all flavored. You can see this is pretty thick. Um, maybe you were to eat this right now out of the pan, it'd be, it'd be really good. Um, so I'm gonna get a touch more stock because by the time we, by the time we get this on the plate, um, it's gonna be kind of thick and too sticky for what we're looking for. It'll, it'll take away from the creaminess. So it should look a little bit almost too thin in the pan because we're gonna heat this back up after our broccoli, so we don't want it to be. Uh, uh, just like a solid mass. Um, salt never went in here, so we're gonna add some salt. Got a, a teaspoon in there, and then we can taste it. Taste, tasting like when we worked the risotto station at, at a restaurant I worked at in the East Bay. If you were working the risotto station, you were going home full every night because the chef was very adamant that you tasted it throughout the cooking process. Um, because there's really only one way to know how it is. You can't eyeball, you can't look and say, oh, that rice is cooked. You need to taste it um, to get it to the right point. So I think we gained a few pounds that year. I worked that station. You got the salt, right? Salt's in there. We'll add the, uh, we'll add the um, chives when we get ready to plate everything up. So just set that off to the side until we're ready to plate. And we're going to go with another saute pan on the burner. Um, any tricks for this dish if it has to hold for a bit while you maybe making another dish? Yeah, like I said, like I added a little bit extra stock in there because it is going to want to kind of set up a little bit. Um, and I'll just make it so it doesn't get too gloopy, gloppy, if that's the right word. Um, but really just adjusting it with the liquid when we go back and reheat it. This broccoli is going to cook super fast um, because we, we already blanched it. So this shouldn't take us more than a minute or so. So in this pan, we're going to go, we're going to add about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Yeah, time for a new saute pan. New saute pan. And how much is olive oil? Tablespoon, tablespoon okay. and a half. And then the garlic can go in before the pan gets hot, because we're going to kind of toast the garlic. Um, I'm actually going to keep mine off, because we got to take our broccoli out of the water. And then we're also going to use uh, a lemon to season this up. So you got your lemon, we're just going to cut that in half. Uh, and we're going to add that juice once we add the broccoli in the pan. Okay, turn your heat down a little bit. So garlic and olive oil. Um, we've got our blanched broccoli. Once you start to see a slight bit of color on that garlic, we're going to add this into the pan. You're ready, dude. Uh -huh. You can just use that spatula or a spoon and just kind of mix it through. Um, uh, when do we add the mushrooms to the risotto? At the end. So they're, they're back in. That's like the last thing. So we already put ours in there. Um, but if you haven't, go ahead and put your mushrooms in the, in the rice. By, by doing this garlic in the oil from cold to, to, to sizzling, it's kind of just seasoning that oil up with all the uh, uh, garlic flavors. So we're kind of making an impromptu uh, garlic oil. Um, so you can see mine starting to sizzle a little bit. And we're going to go in with our broccoli. Hey, Rocco, we have not added lemon juice yet. Not yet. Cut your lemon in half. Cut your lemon in half, and then we're just gonna uh, 
be the juicer. We're gonna put both halves in there. Nice, nice little like acid pop. It's really gonna make this kind of balance out the creamy richness of that uh, uh, risotto. What about the chives? The chives are gonna go in the risotto in a second, and then we're also gonna sprinkle them on top for garnish. Uh, a little bit of kosher salt in here as well. I mean, we had we had salt in the blanching water, which is, is giving it one le level of uh, seasoning. We're gonna add a little bit more just uh, to finish it up. We're just gonna kind of just give this a, a saute, kind of cook that lemon juice down just a little bit. We're just really trying to warm this through. The broccoli's already cooked. Um, so we just want to make it hot. So I got my heat on medium high now. Just making it, just gonna cook it until the broccoli gets hot. Thank you. We're eating. Oh, good. Awesome. I'm glad you're eating. It's so good. It's delicious. Take a picture, it's incredible. Tag us on, on Facebook and Instagram. It turned out so good. Great job. I want to know why did you add onions? I didn't put any onions in there. The onions are only in the risotto. All right, so now our broccoli's hot. Bring the uh, risotto back over and just give it a quick stir. If it, if it got a little thinned out, which I think mine is pretty all right, we're going to add a little bit of chives in there, about uh, half of them, and then we'll reserve the rest for garnishing. Okay. Then you add the you add some of the chives now. Yeah. Simon wants to know when you add the bacon. <laughs> Always. And that's the thing, like, the, the, the cool thing about risotto is it's so versatile, right? Like, you can add anything. Like, instead of the mushrooms, it could have been, you know, bacon and summer squash, whatever you got in the garden. Um, the process is always the same, though. So you see that? It looks pretty thin, but that's right where we want to be. Um, by the time that gets on the plate, it's going to start to thicken up. Why did you add the thyme? The thyme was at the very beginning with the mushrooms. When we were sauteing our mushrooms, if you forgot it, just throw it in now, it's totally fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to plate. Sarah, do you wanna kick it to the other camera? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, okay. So we're gonna plate up just an individual portion. Um, can I show you how we do it? So we've got a, got a spoon with our risotto. I'm going to plate that kind of off to the left. I think we said this feeds two to four. I think it's going to be definitely a uh, generous serving. But you see how when it hits the plate, if you give the plate a shake, it should kind of flatten out. Like that's how I like my risotto. Sometimes it's, it's really thick. And then by the time you get two bites in, it's like eating porridge. Um, this, is, this is how it should look when you're, when you're finished with it. Uh, so we can put some of the broccoli on that plate as well. That garlic smells good, huh? And then uh, you have a little extra cheese. Sprinkle that on top. Stir. And then a little bit of chives. And that is going to be delicious with some pinot. How do we do on timing? Did everybody keep up on that? Yum! Simon. How's yours? Look at that, man. That's so awesome. Yeah. Good job, Wall. You're My great. first time making risotto. Not bad, dude. Good job, Wall. Looks so good. I know. Anybody else got theirs? Anyone else? It looks great. Peter, Peter is showing his um, on screen one. Can you screen through? Um, Jesse Armstrong, yours looks delicious. Simon, beautiful. Nice. That looks great. Wow. Sharon's looks 
better than ours, like yeah, always. Yeah, Aaron's yours was great too. And oh, Maggie's, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Has anyone tried it with the wine? Oh, Joe, I feel like we're at your d dining room table with you guys, good eating job. with That's you. Good. <laughs> In the kitchen, but close. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Laura and Aaron, do you guys have any questions? If you Is didn't you put your lemon eating? juice, the lemon juice goes in the uh, broccoli. I see a couple people uh, saying, where's the lemon juice? Uh, we squeezed it in to finish the broccoli. So it was uh, sauteed garlic in the oil. We added the broccoli and then we finished it with lemon juice and just kind of heated it through. Minnesota walls, yours looks delicious. Very good. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, leftovers. Leftovers, uh, yeah, if you have leftover rice, you can save it and you can do arancini if you're so inclined. Um, you just, uh, tomorrow it'll be like, once it cools down, it's gonna be really solid. So you take uh, like a scoop, like a cookie scoop and you, you, you roll it into a ball. You can stuff a piece of cheese inside. Uh, dip it in flour, egg, and then breadcrumbs, and you can fry that. It's a really awesome little snack. Um, that would be my suggestion yeah. for leftovers. Other great dishes that go with our pinot. I mean, salmon's always a great dish. You know, pinot's so versatile that goes with everything. Uh, chicken. Uh, yeah, I like it because, you know, you think everything's red wine and red meats. And uh, of the two things we've cooked with this, uh, it's, been, it's been the risotto, which is vegetarian, and then uh, the first atelier experience we had before we were on uh, quarantine, um, we paired it with the salmon. And it's just, it's, it's a really fun, versatile wine. You can do a lot of different things with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really nice. Plus we're doing the Pinot again in May's quarantine with- Yeah, we're, what are we doing with that? The mushroom popper. Oh yeah, we're gonna do a popperdell, uh, popperdell pasta uh, at the end of uh, May. Um, we have our, uh, one of our packages that we have is with the pino and that's got a, a nice, uh, little, little spice, uh, tomato sauce. Yep. Um, so. yeah, it really goes with a lot of different things. Can you share the instructions again for the arancinis? Yeah. yeah so it'll be, uh, it, tomorrow if you want, you take like a scoop, right? Like a, something that'll give you like a golf ball size scoop. You don't, if you don't have a scoop, you just do it by hand, roll the cold rice into a ball. Take a chunk of cheese if you'd like, um, like Fontina, something melty, cheddar would be fine. Shove that in the center of it, and then you bread it. And so that, that'd be getting a little bit of flour, roll the whole thing in flour, uh, take some eggs and kind of scramble them up, dip that in the egg wash, and then dip that in breadcrumbs. Panko is good, any kind of breadcrumbs you have will work great. Um, and then you fry that. So you get a pan with some shallow, shallow fry with some oil, Get it hot, drop that in there until it's nice and golden brown. Arancini means little orange in Italian, so it should be like a nice golden kind of orangey color. Um, a lot of times they'll use saffron risotto for that to really drive home that color. Um, but yeah, that's a great, we had that, when I was working at the restaurant, we had that as one of our appetizers and it's just a fun little snack, little starter to get, get the meal started. Next week, while we're doing our state Chardonnay that's gonna be paired with- uh... Doing a baked rigatoni uh, with a bunch of cheese. Um, in a little salad. Cool. Yeah. Then we have our May yeah. Pinot Tea Kitchen. It's, be live. it's already live on our website. You guys can check out all the dishes that we're going to have. And if, if this was a little fast too, we can, uh, we're, Sarah's uploading all these to uh, our YouTube channel, uh, which is Bricolor Vineyards. Um, so you can go back and watch. And, you know, if I was going too fast, just pause it. <laughs> oh, it'll also be on the website on the blog also. Cool. Yeah, we have our uh, kitchen quarantine packages available on the website also with the uh, recipe will be typed out on our blog on Monday. Um, you can find the videos on our YouTube. Uh, what else? Uh, locals food and wine package available also for pickup. Uh, free local delivery also. Uh, Non-local delivery on all wine. Um, the black uh, pepper pasta is now available. Pizza available on Tuesday. Do you want to talk more about pizza again? Yeah, so we're going to be doing two different ones. We're going to do a, 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 a tomato sauce, a sausage, roasted garlic, olive pizza. And then the other one, I actually got one so back here. here's the, the package that you'll be getting right here. By the magic of TV. <laughs>
This is the uh, mushroom one. This is my one of my favorites. And a uh, little bit of Calabrian chili, three different cheeses, some roasted mushrooms, some leeks. Um, but those are the two pizzas we'll start with. And then as stuff starts coming out of the garden, you'll see different we also things. have. Oh, yeah. This is our, which one is this? This is the ragu. The ragu. And that's the uh, pizza, yeah. bourguignon. Um, and we have step-by-step -step instructions yeah. on how to heat them up and prepare them at home. Yep. And then uh, also the Be Well with Well Sonoma class on Monday. Yeah, with Deacon. With Deacon. So check, uh, look on our website for that. And yeah, unmute. Everybody can talk to yeah, everyone can, everyone can And also our shipping promotion, too. So look on the website for that. This was great, guys. The Nice job, guys. It's awesome. Oh Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, it's fun to see people. Sorry we look goofy. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Gangsters. Gangsters. I know, right? <laughs> Bring your guns next time. Yeah. <laughs> Chris has his built in. Oh, God. <laughs> the band of mirrors. <laughs> it looks great, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody. Yeah. We made a lovely dessert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Mom. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Guys. All right, guys. We loved it. We loved it. It was great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get out of it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, man. Final cheers. This is so hard. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is work right here. Final cheers. Now time to drink and eat. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. See you next week.